It's a reflection of a voice with no direction. Feelings that are trapped and they want to escape. Time is an inspection of the past, future, and present. We gotta live and we learn. We move forward, no return. We fly or we burn. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Carl Ray Johnson, if you're new here. And today I'm gonna be going over exactly how I made the Fly Away music video that just got released yesterday. At the end of this video, I'll play you the whole video so you can see it. But I wanna actually walk you guys through my process of how, start to finish, how I created this music video. It was just done by me. I wrote the idea for it. I directed it. I shot it. I edited it. I didn't have anybody there helping me. It was a one-man crew. And I think it turned out really good. And I want to pass on my workflow and my process of how I was able to pull this off and how you can as well. So I'll start from the very start of how I even connected up with the musician that I ended up making the video with. I was doing a shoot for a surf event, I believe it was. It was like a kids surf event in the beach town near where I live, Dominical, Costa Rica. There was a, a bunch of music arranged for it at the end, kind of like the, the after party after everybody was done surfing. and. And this guy came out for one of the songs and started singing or I think he did like two or three songs he just had like a lot of presence when he was out there you know he wasn't on stage but just out there in the sand dancing around like he had like badass dance moves and everything an amazing voice and I just instantly thought that I want to make a music video with this guy and I just introduced myself and asked him if he'd be interested in making a music video together just to put it out there see where you know where that would go they didn't have much of a budget at all though so we kept it super simple um, it was just like I said a one-man crew it was just me and just my equipment that I that I own I didn't go out and rent anything not that there's anywhere to rent anything here in this tiny town of Costa Rica anyway so this is just a good point here of like when you're out trying to find clients sometimes the clients don't even know that you know that they need you or that they want to hire you you got to go out and introduce yourself and tell them that you want to make a video for them the beauty of finding clients like that is you get to choose who you work with instead of just sitting there waiting for people to hit you up for work look at people that inspire you and just reach out to them and offer them to make a video even if you're just getting started you know you can offer to do it for free if you want or you know for really cheap just to you know get the experience and be able to work with people that you actually want to work with the first track he actually sent me that he had an idea that he wanted to make a video for i instantly fell in love with and i basically just put some headphones in laid in my hammock and i listened to the song i think three times through right away even the first time through i could tell tell you know some ideas of how I'd want to make the music video and the, the lyrics in the song uh, made it very clear to me how I wanted to um, tell the story in the video and I wanted this music video to tell a story I didn't want it to just be a bunch of dope shots I wanted it to be somewhat of a short film feeling video but not too much that it's distracting from the song the track was actually a produced by a drum and bass producer in um, Panama. He's Venezuelan, I believe. And the singer of it is from the Dominican Republic. So after I listened to the song like three times, I started taking notes. I wrote out kind of a rough script and like concept for the video. I was essentially scripting out the edit in a way. I didn't realize it when I was doing it, but when I was editing, I realized it was so easy for me to edit because I had already scripted exactly how I wanted this vision in my head of how I wanted it to look. Fortunately with this song, it just kind of came to me. This part of the process of writing out ideas, it's a lot easier if it's a song that you kind of connect with. I really love music and uh, music brings me to other places. This was a track that when I first hear it just totally brought me to this, this vision of this music video. The whole music video is pretty much a dream. 
And it's about him flying away and kind of getting away from all of the stresses and being like out in nature and feeling whole again. So the next thing I had to figure out was locations. Now, Stefan wanted to shoot in nature. Fortunately, we're in Costa Rica, um, near Dominical, Uvita area. There's no shortage of beautiful locations here to shoot. Uh, there's waterfalls everywhere, there's gorgeous beaches, there's huge bamboo forests. So I just had to pick my, my favorite spots, you know, kind of the most epic spots. So I picked Nyaka Falls, which if you ever come down here, you have to go to. It's probably the most amazing waterfall I've ever been in my life. I picked Tortuga Beach, which is near a town called Ohochal. Sounds like there's some, uh, there's a iguana on my roof. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but um, Tortuga Beach in Ohochal is just huge expansive beach and there's these beach caves on it which I really wanted to shoot in and also get some kind of cool fly through shots with my drone um, which by the way were really terrifying I felt like I was about to lose my drone on a few of those shots and then we also shot at this huge bamboo farm it grows like really big chunky bamboo for building and it's this huge bamboo forest and so we shot there for one of the locations and then lastly we shot at this abandoned building that since I've seen this space, I've always wanted to shoot a music video there. And I didn't even know if it was okay to go into it. There wasn't any no trespassing signs, but um, it wasn't clear if it was cool for us to shoot there. So it was kind of risky shooting there, but it paid off. It was an amazing spot and just how I had imagined it. And then actually lastly was we shot in this room right here, which is my girlfriend's son's room and he was out of town and I moved everything around in this room to make it kind of a set of um, the beginning and the ending of the video of him right before he goes to sleep and laying down in bed. So come shoot day, I had planned a friend of mine, Pedro, who you've actually seen in a previous video, that San Jose video, if you haven't checked it out, check it out, it's a few videos ago. He was supposed to come and shoot behind the scenes for this video, but he ended up that morning hitting me up and telling me that he couldn't come, he had kind of a family emergency. So unfortunately this video, I, I can't show you really behind the scenes what was going on. We took off super early morning, like around sunrise to Niagara. Of Falls, I had actually arranged with um, one of the entrance properties that you go through to let us in um, early and they didn't charge us to go in. Normally you have to pay to go into this waterfall, it's on private land. But I had worked out a deal with him that I'd give him some videos and so now he lets me go for free because I, I give him content for you know their business. And it was just Stefan and me, the singer of the song, and relatively little gear. I was just shooting on my Sony A7S, the original A7S, my Crane 2 gimbal, my DJI Air 2. That's pretty much it. A couple lenses, a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, and a 50 millimeter Canon FD 1.4 vintage lens, which is by far my favorite lens to work with, especially in shoots like this. So we showed up at the waterfall first. The first issue is the spot that I wanted to shoot, which was the most epic spot. There's actually two waterfalls at this spot, and I wanted him to be standing at the very top of the first waterfall with the other waterfall in the background. That specific spot, though, was just full of mist from the waterfall. So it had been raining a bunch at this time, so the waterfall was just like pumping and that entire area was just full of mist from the waterfall above. My camera and my drone both were just getting soaked. Like the first shot that I got um, for my drone, my drone came back and when I was landing it, it's just literally dripping with water. Fortunately, my equipment was fine. I ended up drying it that night when I got home with the hair dryer and made sure everything got really dry. Um, actually check out my little hair dryer setup that I did to really get my camera totally dry. So what we did first, and this actually ended up being a little bit of an issue at the first location at the waterfall, but what we did first and what you would do with any music video is you bring a speaker with you. I actually brought this speaker right here. Unfortunately, the first location, the waterfall, the waterfall was so loud that I had this at full volume 
and he could barely hear it. What you basically do on a music video shoot is you play the song, the actual produced track that's going to be in the final video on a speaker and the singer is essentially lip syncing. I mean they're actually singing it out loud to the song but they're just singing to the song playing on the speaker and then later in post you sync that original track with the video clips and that way you have like the final song playing in the music video and hopefully you got good enough shots with the singer singing close enough to the song that you don't have to mess around with the syncing too much. And how to make it easy to sync was I just set up a small lavalier mic next to this speaker when it was playing the song and was recording that in my camera, my Sony A7S while I was shooting. So in Premiere I have an audio track with the song playing that I can use the automatically synchronized function in Premiere to sync it to the original track. But basically what we did was first I got drone shots, so we ran through the whole song I think two times, two or three times with me revolving around in the drone around him. I also got one establishing shot of flying into the waterfall. I did that at every location and we ran through the whole song at every location a couple times doing drone shots first and then next I put my Sony A7S on my Crane 2 gimbal and we ran through the song twice I think. Uh, me as well revolving around him and not really super close up, more like pull back a little bit and ran through the whole song twice again. Next run through, we did two run throughs of just straight up handheld with the A7S and I did this with the 50 millimeter 1.4, that vintage lens I mentioned. And I have like, I just recently kind of got a, a cage and rig set up on my camera uh, with a nice handle and top handle. So I was able to get kind of smoother shots handheld and I focused on getting closer up shots of more of just his face. And I wanted to get kind of like off kilter, kind of trippy looking shots to give like more of a raw, like kind of dreamlike feel to it. It's good to have as many run throughs as you can and you can really pick out the best shots and the best performance as well because you're not just looking for the best shot, you're looking for the best performance. You're shooting a performance and that's what you really want to shine through in the video. So when it came down to the editing process, I ended up spending a couple weeks editing this video, but I actually had the first rough cut done in probably two days. I'm used to editing really fast. I've gotten really fast editing over the last couple years. Um, I've been working with clients that I need to get stuff turned around like either that day or the next day. I usually offer 24 hour turnaround on my shoots. So I'm used to just busting it out and getting it done. This video though, I was super proud of and I just like wanted to put a lot of love in and I was having so much fun doing it because I wanted it to be something I could put out and be really proud of. So I ended up basically revisiting the video. Sometimes I'd take a couple days off, but I would at least take a day off here and there. And when I revisited the video and sat down again with it, I would see it in a, in a new way and I was able to kind of like really refine it because of that. So that's something as far as editing workflow that if you have the time, I recommend just putting it away for a second, next day coming back or even two days later. Actually, one of the best sessions I had was after leaving it for a couple days. Just let it clear your mind, come back to it again and you're gonna see new things that you wanna do. So if you have the time, take, take your time on the edit. You know, you can really um, refine it and make it you know, twice as good if you put in a few extra sessions on it. And since I'd already scripted out the video pretty well in the very beginning, the edit, just to get the basic layout of where the clips went, was super easy. I already had it mapped out. I just had to plug them into, you know, my, my storyline that I had mapped out. And so that part didn't take too long. You know what took the longest though was, was syncing up his singing with the drone clips. Drones don't record any audio, so you basically just have to manually uh, sync it up to the song. And I did that by zooming in like 400% in Premiere and in the monitor and just looking at his mouth. 
and trying to match it up. Now this took me like quite a few attempts to get it right and then even quite a few revisions on the final video but it was a lot of like little little details like that with the syncing that took me probably the longest with this video. And then when I had the video, the first cut pretty much done, the producer of the track, Dart075 is his name, he contacted me on Instagram and he asked me if there was any way that he could be added in to the video and if that worked in some way with the script, if it made sense. And because he is the producer of the track and um, you know I understand why he wants to be in the video, I figured it out a way to you know, work it in that, that actually made sense and I think in the end actually made the video more interesting. What I had to do, because he wasn't here, he was in Panama, I had to basically script out a shot list for him of shots that he could hire somebody or have a friend come out and shoot him in his studio and I basically had to direct a shoot from here, just cross my fingers that they got the shots that I needed that I could actually work with and that matched well enough with my Sony footage. They got some great shots. I didn't end up using a lot of them just because I'd already pretty much sculpted the whole video and the story. And there was only a few spots in it that really made sense for me to put that in. The producers in Panama, the singers here in Costa Rica, they made the song together from different places and it's just kind of cool to see them and different places come together in the music video so that was fun and i'm i'm stoked that i was able to work that in and the producer stoked that he got to be in the music video too without even being here and as far as the the actual edit goes it was a music video so i was able to play around with it and use a lot of crazy different new effects that i, that I was trying out i went on Storyblocks and also youtube and downloaded a bunch of new overlays which i recommend you trying out if you haven't used them much they're basically just a video of like you know maybe light flares light leaks or it could be like glitches or it could be like kind of dust particles floating around and you can easily just put them right on top of your clips in your in your timeline and set the overlay to screen you'll be able to see through it and you can adjust the opacity to exactly how you want it but i i used overlays a lot in this in this particular video i felt like it was really conducive to a dream and kind of helped me kind of meld everything, all the clips together. And I did kind of subdued tones, so it's not super saturated, it's not super contrasty, but this is something that's totally doable. And doable with um, a small film crew or just yourself, like I did, and just a camera and a drone and a computer and some time, you know, and some creativity. That's pretty much all it takes. So without further ado, here is the actual video that just premiered yesterday and I hope you guys enjoy it. And also to remind you, I am doing a live webinar on June 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time specifically about how to become a freelance filmmaker and photographer or just creator in general and travel the world and live abroad. So you guys should totally join me on that. It's gonna be an hour long, it's totally free, and I'm gonna go like step by step my process of how I've been able to do this and do it anywhere in the world. And I'm gonna pass that on to you guys. So please sign up in the description, there's a link, and I hope to see you on June 10th. Enjoy the music video. Trapped and they want to escape 
Time is an inspection of the past, future, and present. We gotta live and we learn. We move forward, no return. We fly or we burn. Stop.